Welcome happy hookers. Today we're going to be making this hexagonal coaster. Well, I say coaster, but it's actually about 20 centimeters, you know, seven, eight inches in diameter. Um, if you, I suppose you can have a diameter of a hexagon, can't you? Um, it is created using a size six crochet hook and I'll pop a link to the yarn below but as you can see it's this beautiful um, knitted style yarn now if you're in the US you're going to have no problem getting this because I believe it is by Bernat and it is the um, the homemaker um, decoration one in the UK this was a really really um, big challenge to find in fact I think I ended up buying some from Amazon and I did pay quite a lot I think I paid about 14 pounds for the ball in total however I have managed to make the um, the basket that we did previously so we're using the mini bean stitch so this complements the basket which I'll pop a link to below um, it is very similar pattern um, to the hexagon that we previously did in terms of sides and corners it just has a slight um, variation on the corner um, and it is edged with a single crochet so let's get into it the first thing you're going to want to do is to create a slip knot um, I generally create mine by wrapping my yarn around my finger um, making a cross and then popping my hook in and pulling this one through here there are many ways um, there's loads of things uh, loads of videos on how to make a slip knot if you are a complete beginner so once we've made our slip knot we're going to chain five so that's yarning over and pulling through our hook one two three four five and then we're going to make a slip knot by inserting a hook into the first chain yarning over pulling through that and pulling straight through the loop on our hook and what we should have if we uh, is a little ring here and we're going to place all of our stitches into the center of this so for the first round we're going to place ourselves six mini beans now we're going to chain one first and we'll chain one at the beginning of every round okay so the first mini bean so we start by inserting a hook into the circle yarning over and pulling back through so we have two loops on the hook then we yarn over and then we insert and then we yarn over and pull back through so you're looking for four loops on the hook two of them will obviously be longer as you can see and two of them will be slightly shorter you're then going to yarn over and pull through all four loops on your hook to complete the stitch you're then going to do a chain and that is your first mini beam so we'll try that again so oh we also need to place one more chain here because these will be um, where we will be placing our um, our corners so we're going to we need to make place two there another one there essentially so we're going to insert yarn over pull back through yarn over insert yarn over pull back through yarn over and pull through all four chain one to finish the stitch with an additional chain one okay let's try that one more time insert yarn over pull back through and when you get to here pull it back up don't kind of sit here trying to continue because you're wanting to make a big stitch so pull it back up back to here yarn over what I like to do here is I actually pop my finger can you see on this to hold it so that as I'm going in what I'm not doing is creating a really tight stitch so I almost hold it back from pulling tight as I go in to yarn over and then there we go four close the stitch chain one and chain another one so we've got three mini beans here 
So we need to make three more. So insert, yarn over, pull back through, pulling that up. Yarn over, insert, yarn over, pulling back, four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all four. Chain to finish the stitch and then an additional chain for the corner. So insert, yarn over, pull back through, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull back through, four loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all four, chain to finish the stitch and an additional chain. Okay, so we've now got one, two, three, four, five, we just need one more mini bean in the center to complete the first round. And then we can start getting onto how we construct those corners and those sides. So once you've finished your last stitch and you've placed that additional chain, you're going to join. And where you're actually going to join, if I just show you is, so if we look at the stitch pattern, the stitch makeup here, there's a hole here. You might find you can feel almost two holes with the loop, but look for the hole on the right hand side here. Straight above it is that additional chain that we did. This little stitch here straight above is the closing stitch. And this was when we pulled through the mini bean. So what you're going to want to do is we're going to want to slip stitch into this one here at the top of the mini bean that was our closing stitch. And we're going to just insert yarn over, pull through, and then pull straight through this one. And perfect. And what we're going to then do is we're going to chain one. Okay. So we now need to place into in between each of the mini beans, we're going to place two mini beans. And this is going to start to be our corners. So Whilst it might be tempting to go into this one here, what we want to be looking for is going into the one this side, because this is our additional chain that we placed. This is actually the side of this mini bean, like this. So as long as we make sure we're going into this one directly here, if you are in any confusion, just open it up and it's this side that we're going into. So we've chained one, and what we're going to do is we're going to place two mini beans into the same stitch and because this is a corner we want to place an additional chain in between our two mini beans so i've placed one and i've done an extra chain and then i've done another one there we go perfect now we're going to jump across to the next place now we don't want to do an additional chain here because you're only ever going to do an additional chain wherever you now place two in the same stitch. Moving across to the next one, you just go straight in. So we're going to place two mini beans here. An additional chain between them. Oh, I always want to yarn over first with the mini bean, but we go straight in without yarning over. So we've got two, perfect. And can you see now it's already starting to form those little bits of the points. Okay, so we're gonna jump straight across to, I mean, pull it apart, look at the stitch, cause it might, you might be like, where am I going? Okay, I can see my gaps. Okay, I can see my right hand gap. Okay, I've got my bean here. This is where I want to be going. Don't be afraid to really get into the work and think, okay, I need to work out where I'm going and it all just looks like a sea of yarn at the moment. So one mini bean and an extra chain going straight back into the same place with that second mini bean. And there you have it. Okay, so we're gonna jump across here there we go, we know we're going in here, yarning over, hopefully I've got this close enough to the camera so that you can see, chain, 
do one more chain if you miss that one more chain it really isn't going to ruin your piece um, it means that you won't have quite as much room when you're doing your next round and you're popping because what we're going to be doing is you know when we come round again everywhere we've got two we're going to be hopping in here and popping another two and it just means you're going to be a little bit tight on space but it will still work okay so hopping over finding our too many beans making sure we're going into this hole that's the right hand hole and placing ourselves too many beans with an extra chain just gonna get myself some more yarn okay so straight back in i do love the mini bean you can get a really good rhythm going when you get into a nice pattern of how you create that mini bean okay so now we're getting to our last one so can you see we've got two four six eight ten so twelve so we're hopping into here for our last two mini beans Okay, and then once we've completed that we're going to be hopping over to here and can you see we're going to be looking for the same space can you remember I said look at the bean and look at the stitch right above it this is the closing so this is the extra chain this is the closing stitch and this was the side when we pulled through all four so we want to be going to this one here, which was the closing stitch. Let me just focus to create our slip stitch. Oh, my hook fell out. And we end up actually at a corner. And can you see it's actually all started to take on quite nicely or hexagon. And we're ending up at the corner, which is nice because we'll be then starting popping another corner in. And now what we have actually is in between these two corners, we quite nicely have the start of a side. So we'll be learning at how um, learning how we'll be creating the sides. So we'll chain one, and then we're going to straight into here. You remember we're looking for this one here, straight in with. Our mini bean and then we're placing an extra chain because we're going straight in with another mini bean and then we're going to take a little bit of a look at the makeup of this hexagon now and I've got a little diagram to show you so we've placed two mini beans in the same place we placed two on the one below and we can see here is the next two so when we get here we'll be placing two mini beans into this corner but what we can see here is we've got a nice little space in between these two corners space looks the same as before where we know we need to be going in here but what we're going to be doing is we're only going to be putting one mini bean in the side so we've closed this stitch there's no extra chain, we're just going to be going straight into this side and placing one mini bean in the side. There we go, that's our one mini bean in the side. Then we're going to be going straight into the corner here, making sure that we're hopping into the right place. And we know our corners by now, it's quite nice and easy. One mini bean, an extra chain straight in with that second mini bean and then we're going to take a look at that diagram and I, I like to do diagrams I think a lot of people do fear a diagram over a written pattern but I think it really helps for you to visualize okay let's make some room here and let's really zoom in okay so we've got the mini bean here's the pink this is the original round where we did our six mini beans in the center yeah this is our next round where we placed two mini beans it's actually slightly in the wrong place because we placed the two mini beans 
in between if you like well not if you like in between in between each of these so I do apologize but following on from here what you can see is this is the round that we're working on so can you see every time we do we've done two we'll do another two and another two and another two coming out of the center here and this is our corner and what we've just done is we've done a corner and we've done one side so can you see there was that space there this space here and this space here was in between it was in between two of our corners we had one so obviously these little ovals this is one mini bean this isn't the um uh, the icon for a mini bean there are specific icons but this is the same stitch all over so I, I just created it to look like a bean um, so you can see and I've actually put some black scribbles so we can see these are singles so you can see how the pattern's going to work we're going to be always placing a corner in a corner but every time we do a new round can you see what it's going to do it's going to create a space at the side for one more single mini bean so this round we only had space for one but can you see the next time we go round we're going to have space for two on the side it's going to be one this side and one this side and then we have our corners and that really is how it works now you might start to get oh I don't know when I've got back to the beginning if this has got a little bit misshapen so what I would suggest is what we'll start to do is we'll start to pop a stitch marker or something to identify that this here is the corner um, when I get back round to the middle because I've been there where I've got to this corner and I think that I finished because it's been a little bit misshapen um, and actually I haven't fully completed the round so let's carry on we'll complete this round we'll hop back and we'll take another look at our um, our diagram just to see how it compares so I've popped a stitch marker in here so we can clearly see where we are when we get back round to the beginning so we're going to continue popping our corners in or our points if you like one being in the side until we finished so we've just finished our corner we're going to hop straight into our side so what we're looking for is identifying our two corners here hopping into here and just making sure that we're going into this side this hole here so in and the beans like I say do work up super quick that's a side so no extra chain now we're onto a corner so one bean a chain in the middle and another bean and if I'm going a little bit fast for you here um, please feel free to pause it I mean I think by now you've probably got the hang of it um, we're going on to a side now so and the way that you could probably work this out is count so we know we're going to do corner one side corner one side corner one side and when I say one side I mean as in one bean in the side so I often use sort of it's not quite a mnemonic but it's like a counting pattern a verbal counting pattern and I often do this in circular crochet so we're going bean in the side okay corner okay so remember for a corner it's going to have an extra chain so extra chain another bean there we go so bean in the side one bean in the side so just referring back to the pattern we know we're on pardon me I've just got a little bit of a runny nose it's quite a warm day here um, we know we're on this row and what we can do is we can label them so we've got one two three four and five so that we know that we're currently on round three and round three has one bean in the side so we do our one bean in the side
and then we know that we're onto our corner looking for our two beans there we go I'm right in there and this yarn um, which is a tubed knitted tube yarn is very good in there it doesn't split um, and with the bean when you're going into different areas not well not different areas but when you're going into areas where you're having to look a little bit closer um, and maybe move stuff about you're, you're handling your yarn um, and if it's a yarn that's more likely to get bobbled or, or roughed up this tube yarn does work very well the reason I've picked this is simply because I want quite a large um, a large mat um, I want it to be quite hard wearing um, and I like the idea of this finish um, certainly not all of my furnishings go well with um, wool or um, traditional spun yarn. Um, I do have quite a bit of macrame. We have, um, you know, things that are burlap and hessian. So anything that's more of like a rope or, or t-shirt material certainly works quite well in terms of the fibre and the look. And I love my greys and my neutrals. So it's a win-win. Okay, so we're on to a side now. So we're going in for our one mini bean on our side. And then we're on to our penultimate corner. In fact, we're on to our last corner because we've already done this corner. We're going to be joining up. So a corner is our one bean. And our extra chain. And going back in for there we go so we've got one last side to do I'm just gonna get myself a little bit more yarn and I still haven't taught my cats how to automatically feed my yarn without eating it so if that could be done then I would be very happy so our last side mini bean And then we're going to join so I'm going to take my stitch marker out and I had actually placed it in the correct place which again not this chain here but the chain that's actually at the top of the bean this one here I'm going to join with a slip stitch and there we have round three so I'm going to do round four with you refer to the pattern I'm then going to leave you a, um, I'll pop on the screen the diagram so you can take a screenshot, otherwise this will be a very long video um, and you can obviously make it as big as you want um, and then I'll hop back on here and I'll show you how to edge it with the single crochet and then if you want you can also add in a crab stitch edging which I'll pop a link to a video of how to um, edge in crab stitch. Okay, so we're on to round four. We're going to chain one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my stitch marker in, not the one that I've just chained, but the one before, so I know where to join on the next round. So we're going straight into a corner here. We're going straight into this one. If you can see, here's our double. Always look for the Vs, can you see? parting this is our corner and we're going to be going into this side here and placing one bean a chain and another bean straight away for our corner okay so on this side we now have two spaces so let's take a look at the anatomy you can see here is our other corner and here is our corner and can you see if I pull that apart we have in between two beans yes two beans here so what that means is I'm going to be able to pop one here and I'm going to be able to pop one here see I've got two spaces in fact ignore the fact I said I've got two beans that's a lie I've got a corner a corner and one bean in the middle very misleading I do apologize but it means I've got two spaces either side of the bean which we're going to put two more new beans in like this 
and let's just refer back to the diagram so if we were looking at this like this can you see let's have a look we've got this is the round that we've just done with our corner and our corner and our one bean in the middle this is the round that we're just doing corner and a corner and our two beans are going to go either side so on round four so if you're using a counting technique it's a corner um, and a side of two beans <laughs> a side of two beans sounds like a very small dish at a restaurant isn't it so okay so let's do our side of two beans so we're hopping over to here for our mini bean and remember we're not placing any additional um, chains because we don't on the side we're just going straight into the next space and placing the next mini bean it's only on the corners because we need to fit two in there that we place an additional one okay so now we're on to our corner and don't forget to look because it can start to feel like oh i've lost my shape i'm not sure where i am so just look from the center out look for these twos and you know that this is where our corner is going to be so we'll place one bean here i need to pull myself some more yarn it is a little bit of a yarn eater the bean stitch i will not lie um but with things like coasters and mats you shouldn't be using excessive amounts and breaking the bank okay so there we go so i've oh hang on i'm not sure if i just chained oh i hadn't so i just pulled through and i needed to close the stitch my additional chain and then i'm going back in for my second bean in the corner okay so i'm on to another side now so remember we've got two beans in this side so the first one is going to go here straight in to the second one no additional chain and then we're on to another corner so we're going to go into that corner with the first of our two beans closing our stitch creating another chain and we're going to hop straight in with another one perfect okay we're on to the side now so first of two beans i love saying beans it's such a cute little word isn't it the second of two beans here just just wiggle it apart and you'll see whenever you crochet into spaces it's always really nice you know just going straight into a space okay let's just find the space here this is a corner remember corner and two on the side so we're going to go for the first one here extra chain and then another corner not another corner another bean and this is a pretty quick round so we're getting there look we're nearly back at the beginning okay two sides two beans i need to pull some more yarn while i'm pulling yarn you can be continuing with your two beans in the corner and your one bean on the side no cats visiting us today i'm afraid you'll have to wait for one of my podcasts if you haven't watched any um i'll pop a link above um, to a couple of podcasts because um, the cats join me and it is very sweet um, I'm crocheting cats you know what could be cuter okay so we're gonna do the first of one of our side beans and then we're going to do the second one and then we're back to a corner Okay, we got this we know the corners you should be a dab hand by now at the corners we go bean extra chain bean onto the side okay so side bean <laughs> side beans uh, I, I will get over that joke I mean it is a little bit of a dad joke isn't it um, another side bean here don't worry if you're in a different place to me um, 
it doesn't it's not necessarily a crochet along per se I'm thinking by now you've got a basics of the pattern okay so corner I'm going in for my first corner bean there we go I'm going to pop an extra chain in there and I'm going to insert for my last one okay so I've got two side beans here and interestingly enough this wasn't the right place to pop my stitch marker because actually I did a corner after and it's the corner that I want to be joining it to so just be careful about that actually I do apologize so let's hop in here for the first of our side beans okay and I'm going to take this out and I'm going to pop it in here which is where we want to be heading oh I've just got a little bit of that tube that's not good look how short my nails are I had lovely long nails in the, the spring and then just with gardening and things they've just all had to come off otherwise they looked very grubby and not very nice on camera for you guys okay so we've done one side bean I'm about to do another side bean okay and then I'm going to finish off so remember what we said look for the corner not the place where you would be normally putting your stitch because you want to be going in there for the next round it's the little single at the top of the stitch where you previously closed your mini bean is the place that you want to put your slip stitch okay how's that looking if you find your sides are starting to curve in a little bit I I noticed that with this yarn it did um, I wouldn't be too concerned all it is is because we're popping an extra one here um, you know it's causing a little bit more of a point however once we add our single crochet around the edge I anticipate that it will um, be disguised because we'll only be popping um, one single crochet in each corner so it'll sort of kind of even itself out perfect okay so let's take a look at our diagram again so we've just done round four tick that off which was the two sided one and I'm going to leave you here now so I'm going to give you this to take a screenshot of so as you can see I've added some notes so this one is saying three single minis on side I've got some arrows can you see two single minis on side one single mini on side three single minis on side so we've just finished the two single minis on side you're going to pop an extra chain on all the corners um, actually with this pattern being very new when you've um, got to the size you want so you definitely this is going to be your last round let's try not putting an extra chain on all corners I'll just put a part from last round and I think that will work really well so we're doing um, a slip stitch and a chain one to join our rounds we're not turning and we're using our stitch marker and counting our rounds so if you want to just um, carry on and edge your um, coaster or your mat that's going to be coming up immediately however I'm going to be back with a slightly bigger version of this so I'm just going to hop off um, and just do a little bit of um, crocheting um, probably um, I'll probably do it this evening um, I like to crochet while I'm watching TV and then I'll hop back on tomorrow for the edging um, which for you will be in about two seconds the power of video editing um, and then you'll have your lovely chunky um, mat which I think for me is going to be um, a little table in the middle of my dining room table um, with a little vase on and maybe some um, artificial flowers so once you've got your hexagon, I realise that this you won't, can't see the whole of mine because it's actually quite large. You're going to, you've joined 
um, with a slip stitch to the top of your corner and you're going to chain one and then what we're going to do is going to place a single crochet in every stitch around now the way to do this is we're actually going to be placing two single crochets in between each of the beans so can you remember we had this space here which is where we would have traditionally put the beam but we've also got this space here we're going to actually place a single crochet almost this side of the post and then we're going to place a single crochet this side of the post and you're going to work around so two beans can we see here look we've got the stitch here this side and the stitch here this side so this is where you'll place your single crochet you see one there almost into the same place between the two beans okay move across you see we've got two beans here we're going to place one stitch this side and one stitch this side so single crochet into the next piece here single crochet what that's going to do can you see is it's going to form this lovely edging to your hexagon let's have a little bit more and we're going to I've actually done all of my sides with the single crochet bar this one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you back to here and I'm going to show you how to do a really nice invisible join at the end so two beans two single crochets one either side in these little holes either side which is essentially going in this stitch and this stitch this stitch and this stitch but what you're not doing is rather than going in the top of the stitch here which will be pushing it through here we're just going to skip down and pop it into the hole here just to make things a little bit easier so one two jump to the next one one two jump to the next one one two it feels nice to be doing some single crochets after all of these bean stitches because when you're working with certainly a heavier weight yarn and a, and a larger hook it can be quite sort of tough and heavy going on the wrists and the hands okay so single crochet single crochet okay next one single single I need to try and work out where I've started so I can tell that if I pop another single crochet in this one here this is actually where I need to join I need to join here into this one but it feels like I need to do two singles here doesn't it need to pop one to one side can you see I didn't put on that side of the post single crochet on that side single crochet that's about right and then we're gonna join okay so joining this is my fabulous um, invisible join technique cut yourself a relatively decent amount of cord you're going to actually pull all the way through like so now there's a couple of ways you can do this you can either do it with a darning needle or you can do it with your crochet hook I'm going to get a darning needle I think I've got um, one big enough for this type of yarn yeah that should be fine okay so I'm going to take this one here and I've, so we've cut it and pulled it through like so let me just show you move it down so you can see it a little bit better here we go so we've pulled it through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to thread my needle and then what we're going to do is we're going to I'm going to if you're like me and this stitch is very much obscuring this stitch we're going to join it to this next stitch after so what we need to do is we need to take our needle and go in the back of the from the front to the back like this 
you see that up and what that's going to do is mimic the stitch so pull it reasonably tight but almost so can you see this bit here this is the bit that we've just so we've come out of the top of this stitch here and we've threaded into the back of this stitch so this is the thread that we've made so what I've done is I've pulled it tight so that that is roughly mimicking the length of my stitches then we're going to pop it over to the back like this and what we essentially want to be doing is popping our needle back into the center of the stitch that it came out so if we pop it back into the center of the stitch that it came out and I like to pop it into the center and then pop it out the back and I'm going to pop it out the back a little bit further down no I'm not so I'm going to pop it into the center and pop it out the back here yeah and when you do that you'll see oh okay it's starting to feel more like a stitch we've got this piece here it's hooking around and under the stitch next to it the same as this can you see that's hooking around into the stitch in fact let's just go back try that slightly differently let's hook it over let's go in and out the front I think that might look there we go can you see that almost looks like a stitch doesn't it so once I've done that I'm going to pop along one more and just push it through the back and get rid of it and tidy it out of the way there you go and that is your invisible joint I mean you really couldn't see at a glance that this is a fake fake one that you've made in fact this is the one this is the fake stitch that we've made and then with this what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop myself weave in and out of a few of the stitches like you would careful not to pull too tight I'm just going to go back and forth and wiggle through so that I can tie this off now if you are planning on making or using your mat for something where you like to get spills or drips and you're thinking actually I'm probably going to end up washing this a little bit more than regular you're going to want to make sure you weave this in quite tight what I would do is I would weave it in down to this center tie it to the center some people even like to add a couple of little drops of super glue now this is very clearly for me got a back and a front so it doesn't matter hugely if it's quite obvious from doing this that I've weaved a piece along the back just trying to get a few different directions I pull that like that so that I can get down to the center of the hexagon so that I can tie it to my original piece there we go we're almost there I think I'm just going to go through a couple there and then I'm just going to go back on myself and pick it up and then back down and then what that gives us is the ability to tie the two in the middle together with a couple of knots to secure so in fact I'm going to do one more because these knots seem to hide very well and then what I can do is I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room because I don't mind because I know I've clearly got a top and a bottom um, now this is going to be blocked which you will have obviously seen at the beginning of the video it is very flat um, so I will what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down I'm going to spray it with a little bit of water um, I'm going to lay a um, tea towel over the top of it then I'm going to pop a, a book nothing too heavy um, and I'm not certainly going to saturate this it's just a very light spray because I've got a couple of little kinks here can you see it's sort of undulating a little bit that's completely normal it's not fighting for room there's more than enough stitches um, it just needs flattening down 
So here we have our finished hexagon, which I have blocked and stretched. And as you can see, it does a really great job if I pop my little, let me just angle the camera a little bit for you there. If I pop my mug of crochet hooks, just pop that up a little bit like that. You can see nicely, I've got a lot of room around it. Equally, if we wanted to put something larger, which now I'm looking for something, oh, here we go. I have a very random cat, a silicon cat um, nightlight, which needs charging. I meant to poke him, obviously not in the face. Um, and he changes color. Um, so it makes a really, really nice addition um, to something equally. I think if you had one of those low, um, you know, succulent style, um, planters or bonsai pots which I know are very popular at the moment even the artificial ones I think it would look really good it is very thick so um, it could just be a very traditional hot pot holder for your kitchen um, you could probably even yeah I would say you could probably even pick something reasonably warm up with that because it is very thick um, or pop it on the side for popping your pan on obviously you do need to be careful um, and check your um, your fiber content um, because I did have a lady that mentioned once that um, if you pop a hot plate onto or a hot pot onto acrylic it will melt now I think this is quite um, got quite a lot of cotton content but I would just double check um, you're going to want obviously more on the cotton side of things so thank you ever so watching um, sorry I've been away for so long um, if you've watched this video to the end um, please pop a lit what should we say in the bottom let's put something like um, carrots I don't know why I, th I think of the word carrots it do you know why it was um, I was looking for some trousers online that had elastic around the bottoms and they're now actually called carrot style trousers I assume because they make a carrot shape on your leg anyway um, thank you ever so much for watching if you do make this I'd love it if you could tag me over at crochet Chrissy on Instagram um, equally um, you can also I believe you could tag me on YouTube in the community channel um, I'll have to have a look whether you can attach pictures. So um, I'll see you soon. Um, happy hooking. Bye.